are in the white yeah. room again. Yes, yes. Hello, Mariah. Hello, Simon. And uh, after some technical difficulties, I figured out what was the problem. And now we are live. I'm happy that we are uh, back here and that we managed to, to do it uh, regularly. We are also having this chat room. I think I'm the only one inside right now, but never mind. Maybe somebody else, <laughs> if she or he wants to oh, talk. Maybe uh, you can explain me, Simon, how to get there. Ah, yeah, yeah. If you are listening, maybe you can go there, Mariah, also too. So yeah, if you go on the if you go on the website, uh, white room. Mm -hmm pod.com and then you click on live and then you also have the live show so if you're listening right now or if you listen afterwards so and then you have the live show and then there i wrote the link join us in the chat and then there is a link and you click on the link and you're i think you pick a name or don't pick a name and you're in you are still in uh, in argentina right uh-huh and um What happened to you there this week? Ah. Or this past days? Uh, not so much. I'm here and uh, it's warm or it was warm. Now it's getting cold again. And we are getting a little bit sick. I don't know why. Uh, and so that's all the news here from Argentina. Not much. Um, I wanted to bring some update on the coronavirus situation. Not in the mm -hmm. political sense, but just in what I, I witness now, ex especially also here in Argentina from the family side. And I don't know how it is, is ah, in Holland, uh, how it is in Holland or in, uh, in Germany at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows? But I think the, everybody is very. Um, we're um, we entered the resignation phase somehow, and I uh, find it very mm -hmm. sad because, uh, I mean, here it is summer. So people are kind of forgetting it like we did in summer and it will uh, come back now when it's getting autumn and winter and then it will crush hard again. And here the politics is, is much more authoritarian in some way. So and there is much less information, much more, I mean, we have in Germany, we are, I can listen to the to the uh, one of the biggest experts of virology in his own podcast <laughs> in German, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which, which is which is very good. But here uh, we are far away, seems. Of course, here are also intelligent people, but it's a lot more... <laughs> I was just going to say that it's a very relative when you say far away from... From what exactly? From what, you yeah. You're far away from information? Uh, I, yeah, somehow I feel that. I don't know. I feel that here, mm. I feel that, um, I, I somehow feel that. So the people here are, of course, they, they know what it is about, but kind of they're also resigning and, uh, but they get used to, so they get used to the masks a lot, but they also wear the masks if they're alone in the car, for instance. <laughs> It's kind mm -hmm. of a lot of magical thinking around here, and uh, I think, yeah. So what I what I feel is that the government imposed a lot of measures, also hard measure, measures, but that there is not that uh, it's difficult to communicate also so much. Right. And I think it's yeah, it's more difficult even here because of the economic situation uh, mm -hmm. just does not mm -hmm. permit the um, for a lot of people to be so cautious. And so it's just um, continuing now less because everybody is more outside, but it's everything is is con continuing and it will hit hard back when when we go into when they go into autumn and winter. Uh, at the moment, they shut, they close themselves from the uh, uh, from uh, airplanes, from flights, from the from Great Britain, for instance, oh, wow. or Denmark. Uh, to prevent the entry of the uh, new variant or the Disney, but uh, you cannot prevent it. And it's hopeless, no? Yeah. It's hopeless. So, and uh, it's, a, it's a fantasy. Yeah. Anyways, and it's good to do. And in Germany, I feel the same, yeah. although that in Germany we are more richer, and uh, but I feel also a lot of resignation and that we have um, we ha had would have a lot of possibilities politically to uh, to for instance rapid tests <laughs> no where are 
I would like to work with rapid. I would like to have a rapid test for me I, that yep. I can use all the yep. time. That if I want to visit my my grandma, or if I want to go into the bar, or if I want to go, I don't know, somewhere where I know I want to test myself. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I know the rapid test is good for for picking out the contagious people. Uh, mm -hmm. Not the not, it's not picking out everybody who has the virus, but the really contagious people. So it's but there is no. There was a very nice uh, uh, compar com uh, yeah comparison comparison. Um, we are obliged to do our taxes all by our own which is very complicated no but then people mm -hmm. say that, or the politicians say ah to handle a test like that uh, it's too complicated for the people and they will not be able right. to do that and we have to let doctors right. do and that's that. the reason <laughs> that's the reason why they don't want to yeah yeah because then they say oh yeah, yeah then you feel safe and you go out and you say no but yeah. people are not so you know simon stupid, here in there's a f worldwide, of course, a lot of people uh, interested in these uh, conspiracy theorists, you know, oh, yeah. that are ranging from far out to uh, strange or weird to very, very crazy. But I have to say, I I'm not surprised because when you hear how we are acting and reacting and how we are argumenting, then you have a choice either <laughs> to think well you know politicians just you know they they are playing uh, some kind of of they're in this politics track so they can't really say everything or their their thoughts are are pushed in one direction or i don't know but you can also think well there there must be a reason why they are not addressing certain aspects or why you know everything is on the vaccine nothing is on the cure or many 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 questions which you know it would not matter or it doesn't even have to be that there is actually choices made that are wrong but it's just that they don't explain themselves very well so it gives rise to a lot of anxiety i can very well understand it i really can because if you uh look at a lot of these very random choices that are being made and and uh, and others that are not being made and you think okay well yeah i have no clue how to explain this well and then someone says but i do it's the aliens or <laughs> you know or what whatever is the conspiracy at that moment but uh, in this case, for instance, yeah, why not rapid testing? Why not put as much effort into that as into this vaccination? I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is the being done, but we don't hear about it, you know. And that's that's a tricky thing. It's just very tricky. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so let's I have move also on. have some Corona news. Yeah, uh, and it's actually. Um, that in Holland, in the 15th of February, they are going to test um, how to do some public events um, safely and to test it very scientifically. So they will have uh, one, no, they will have two football games, two indoor events, it's like a conference, and two outdoor festivals. And then they will check everyone and see what happens with those uh, small group of, uh, of test people. And mm -hmm. the audience is, is, I think, 500 people in every uh, event. Uh -huh. and, uh, so they make like a kind of a representative study, more or less. Or like yeah, a kind of exactly. a study. Exactly. And it's, is it's it, a study. Yeah, it's, it's a study. And uh, of course, they test the people before they go there, and then they test them afterwards. No, exactly. So they know exactly. how many how many infected got in and how many uh, then came out with the disease or with the virus. True, more or less. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, That's it. 
And are there are other are, measures, no, they are parameters, actually, or is it no? Just... But they are. Sorry, wait, mm, wait, wait. Yeah. They are actually asking you to not come if you know that you are infected, because it's not really the point. Yeah, of you. infecting it's other more people. That what is under? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's more you know what is invisible. So people who are, for instance, have no symptoms. Or yeah, yeah. Just don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which so, are about, <laughs> they're or, not which trying is, to uh, kill anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. my question. But I think it's. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask if the if it's a study, so they make uh, these events. But is there any other parameters? So everybody wears masks, or there is a special ventilation yeah. system, or yeah. what is the? They are. They are. Do I don't think they are doing the ventilation, but they are doing the uh, uh, one and a half meter, and the masks. Yes, indoor and outdoor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I mean it's uh, and um, it's good. Never too late for that. <laughs> I think I think it's very promising because, uh, anyways, it it's it's organized by um, a group of event organizers themselves. So it's not uh, coming from the government. It's an in initiative of the event uh, of the culture culture and uh, event branch. I think mm. you call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at least it's an action, you know, that will give some information, because I don't know. I think there's been uh, some studies in Spain, for instance, where they found that there were no transmissions in outside festivals, outdoor festivals. Mm -hmm. So already this summer they said, well, you know, outdoor stuff can just go. But um, it seems I don't know how this in Germany, but it seems in in Holland, for instance, the the government will not uh, accept any test uh, uh, studies except when they do them themselves. So now we have our own test <laughs> and we'll see what is the result. But it could be a moment to, um, yeah, that, that we know at least, okay, this is safe. Uh, events up to 500 people could uh, could go, Yeah, you know. Yeah, it, I, I, it, I, uh, my association was. I heard of these studies also because I say ne it's mm -hmm. better late than never. But it's of course quite. I mean, <laughs> but there were also other studies like that, and it's always there like were. a kind of a initiative by some institute uh, together. But now yeah. I, I, I'm looking it up, and there was an in, uh, also um, apparently a small study in Dortmund, so around the corner of our theater in mm -hmm. in the concert mm -hmm. house. Um, and they uh, apparently tested with puppies. <laughs> no, not puppies. Puppets. Yeah. <laughs> not puppies. <laughs> puppets. Uh, uh, dummies. Uh, uh, and they... And they simulated uh, breathing and how the aerosols uh, and they, yeah. Yeah. Not with people though. No, somehow. I I, I will read it and then we will can talk of yeah. on that. Uh, okay, good. Another, let's do that. that. Let's let's look for next week because. But it yeah. says here uh, in the, uh, the conclusions are that uh, concert halls and theaters are not indoor, are not, um, mm. uh, are not places for. Uh, are not contagious places. <laughs> yeah, that's what actually uh, we we know more or less in Holland because of the um, that nobody reported, and that's really zero any transmission in theaters. Yeah. 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 So it's anyways, very it's, sa uh, it's sad uh, missed opportunities uh, and. Um, but yeah, let's move on. What what else do we have? So, How, do we have some more uh, small I things? Became yeah, a little small thing that yeah. I'm very curious about. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned the Clubhouse app last, last time, week, and yes. I, I I don't know if I should be ashamed of it or. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed up and uh, and then completely uh, forgot about it and then got you know, unexpected notice that I was admitted. And, um, and then, 
I did not actually have time to go in, but it was very insistent, this app. It keeps sending me messages like, this person joined and you should you should lead them in and you should uh, make them feel yeah. at home. Anyways, I ignored it. But you went there, right? I let you in and then what yeah. happened? Uh, I will not uh, waste so much time talking about it because it's, of course, oh. it's a hype. It <laughs> is... It is uh, also, you can read in other places what is the criticism about it. Uh, uh, there is a lot of crit very critical points. The elitist attitude, the, this uh, marketing thing where, the, no, where, they, <laughs> where they only present it for the iOS system, so for the iPhone. So it's also a certain type of clientele, of a type of persons, all the Apple users which are using it and which means... That is all the pundits in all the world <laughs> that, are, that are coming in. And it's, yeah, it's like that clubhouse, no? a club for the exclusive club. Mm -hmm. And this was, of course, the... So now it's inflating, inflating, inflating. And, but basically, it's interesting. The concept is interesting, as I said before. It's, um, it's basically a platform with audio chats with a lot of different audio rooms. So you can go in into every room and <clears throat> you, you see before you go in, you see also who's there. So, and you can also follow people. So you follow this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then you can see more or less in your, let's say timeline uh, that there is these talks at the moment yeah, going on. And these rooms are at the moment going on. And then you can go in or you can... And if you're in, then you listen immediately to the voices that are speaking at the moment. And you're in the audience. And you could raise your hand to come on to stage and also talk with the people who are speaking. And uh, of course, what is... Uh, and what is interesting is that everybody has been invited by somebody, no? And you see, it, mm. if, you, if you go on the profile of this person, then you see who invited this person. So there's kind of right. a social control <laughs> that you, that you <laughs> for instance, in my, in my, uh, my profile, it says that I have been invited by this uh, person. And uh, <laughs> so this is interesting. <laughs> uh, and yeah. yeah, what happens is uh, it's very I, I think that a lot of journalists and pundits in Germany and uh, around the world uh, are enjoying now that they're uh, wasting a lot of time <laughs> being there and talking and talking and talking talking interestingly enough it's an ephemer ephemeral world so ephemeral. everything disappears like uh, we should maybe it's sim sim uh, sympathetic to me kind of <laughs> working in theater where it also which is also ephemeral, <laughs> so it disappears. You cannot, rec you, mm -hmm. you, you can record it. It's kind of illegal. They ask you not, so you should not record, but people record, of course. Yeah, I had seen uh, that. Yeah. yeah, and so it's a kind of, you feel like a kind of, in a kind of a, a space where you can just talk and it's not being recorded and it's not, yeah. Uh, which in Germany caused some minor scandals because a politician said that he, uh, one of the uh, ministers, um, how do you say, prime ministers of one of our federal states, said that he was mm -hmm. in in the meetings in the meetings uh, managing the Corona crisis. He is he is always playing a game on his cell phone, <laughs> and this caused a minor scandal and then blah blah blah. What I perceive when I look there, I'm immediately drawn into a lot. Uh, I see a lot of coach groups or tech in entrepreneur, entrepreneurial tech coach talks somehow. Coach. Yeah, coach. What do you mean coach? I don't know. Or maybe, uh, so I go like training. into the, Yeah. Giving no, training. No, the, I, I see a lot of coaches being on this platform, Clubhouse. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. and they meet and then they host these talks and they talk and and they I don't know, it's somehow uh, I feel uh, I, I didn't uh, so I entered this app and I followed some people that I know maybe from Twitter or wherever no, and uh, suddenly I got these talks presented to me and I went and I don't know anybody uh, I don't know a lot of these persons but you can click on the profile and somehow it it seems that there appeared in this time already a kind of a clubhouse moderator coach 
uh, caste, no? If you <laughs> una uh, una casta, so una a group. Uh, uh, ah, right. <laughs> like in, so, uh, ki yeah, kind of the the priesthood of of clubhouse. So, and they have, right. and it's interesting how all their profiles look somehow the same. They, they, they somehow a certain style of profile where they say. Oh, it's me. I have this. I'm a clubhouse moderator. Blah blah blah. This is my website. This is my project. This is my. I'm coach and entrepreneur and tech and uh, whatever blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah, somehow. And I found a lot of these coach types, uh, moderator right. types, like moderators who spend the whole day hosting clubhouse talks. And then in the evening, having a virtual clubhouse bar, and then in the morning, having a clubhouse coffee where they have a morning, I don't know. And then they are talking about investment sometimes, no? because uh, this is an app who wants. Right. Who is... <laughs> this I also encountered, yes. Yeah, so it leaves me kind of. It, it is uh, interesting because it's appeals to my voyeuristic side to be able to just go in and listen to these people talk at the at the very moment you no know, about a bit like about I, like us now yeah a bit like us but but you can i don't know if uh, there is not a lot of it's like a live podcast of course but um, you can also see who else is there really with a mm. real name because people have to use real names which is also kind of interesting um right um yeah right. It's all you think it's something that we could uh, we could actually move our podcast there no that we could uh, i mean no no at the moment i mean no, i don't what is what is happening maybe what is interesting lee what, what some interesting things that are happening is for instance some podcasters that i know in germany They have their regular podcast episode. Maybe they also live stream it. And then afterwards they say, um, we are going to meet to make a listener meeting with listeners on this, on the, club, uh -huh. on the clubhouse app. So they make a room or, and at um, yeah. that, uh, that time. And then they discuss the episode. So, and then you can join in and talk, talk with right. them. And this is, this of course, yeah. uh, interesting. Yeah. At the moment, you cannot use it for recording, so it's not really feasible. But uh, in the future, if it's more open to everybody and uh, uh, one sees how in, in which direction it goes, one could, of course, um, if there would be the possibility of recording uh, and of mm -hmm. not 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 going entirely yeah. on this. I mean. And then yeah. one could have a, I, I a podcast and have also listeners yeah. take part in the podcast. Yeah, no, that is the interesting. Yeah, part. yeah, exactly. I mean, it it what is very appealing to me the is the idea that you could have a big group speaking together, kind of like what we do in the Parliament of Practices, this uh, 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 platform for for performers, theater performers, and uh, and scholars, where we speak about. Uh, our practices and uh, and have dialogues around that not only speaking but also using of course the image but we because we do it on zoom mm -hmm. and so you're looking at each other but um but is that is very uh isolated and the zoom room is floating in some kind of nothingness mm -hmm. and what is super nice on this clubhouse is that that feeling of it being some kind of uh surrounding so yeah. you have this sense of being able to switch to other rooms so it, it is some kind of a hive mm -hmm. and um and especially to talk about uh, having dialogues about theater and about practice and about uh, training and techniques i think that kind of environment could be extremely nice but mm. as i saw it indeed they were only speaking about investments and i was <laughs> a little bummed maybe <laughs> about uh, yeah. careers and yeah, yeah. And I did not see yes, actually yes. anything that was really interesting. Yeah, that is the thing that I, after I was like voyeuristically interested and, then, and now I'm like, yeah, oh, I don't know. Don't, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> exactly. it's, then, 
why it, it somehow it is uh, talk, just talking is not really um, does not really make anything better if I mean the idea theoretically is interesting to talk with a lot of people but yeah. then in, in practice it's not not automatically some a benefit let's say <laughs> so here for instance and another thing uh, yeah I wanted to quote some, read some of the groups that I yeah, see here. Yeah, go ahead, quote, groups. So quote. we have here... You smart person. <laughs> uh, does the Apple car come? This is one room. Online mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. and mastermind hacks in 2021. How to build highly engaged communities. Tesla, Elon Musk and something in Chinese. Money dispute with Kevin O'Leary. The round table, high achievers talk, high achievers talk business. <laughs> <laughs> Self-made versus yeah. born into wealth. Yeah, and you know, of course, mm -hmm. yeah, it's of course mm -hmm. self-made. Yeah. Do love. Yeah, well, okay. What do we have? Um, yeah. And then, so a lot of things. Then also a lot of journalists. Yes. Yeah. We could actually uh, 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 yeah. open a let's room do it. at let's some try moment it. Why not? and just make the white room there. Yeah. We open the white room at there <laughs> and then... <laughs> nice one. <laughs> and we yeah, say, let's just try it, Simon. I at think some moment good. we will yeah. try it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we will try it. We will try it. But, you know, I was, there's the last thing I want to say uh, about my week. Uh, ah, yes. Which is that I did a lot of writing... And a lot of talking also uh, with uh, Gonzalo Alacon, who we've had here in the White Room. Yeah. Uh, he's also part of Cross Pollination, this uh, research group uh, of performers. And, uh, and he's a physical com comedian, an actor, actually, physical actor. Um, and we were speaking, and what is, we have been training and, and researching a lot in the studio. And something that that was uh, very intriguing to us is how can one speak about the practice um, and really transmit something when you have no connection to the action, to the real thing. Um, and we can speak together, we feel, because we have that history of having shared the action very intensively and also knowing each other's uh, practice very well. Um, and we were thinking, how can we write in a way from this pr practitioner's perspective, in a way that is also allowing for really thinking new uh, uh, insights and, and a dialogue in between us, these different things, tap dancing and, and com comedic acting, um, in a way that brings the action in the middle of the argument because without the action present something so essential is missing from the exchange that uh, that it changes the whole nature and also in a way the force of the dialogue its very essence becomes different because you're speaking about you're speaking in theory you're inviting arguments actually because you don't have the thing present and um and that's uh, uh when i think of this online work that's just what i realized that the parliament of practicing being on practices being on zoom a dialogue held on zoom which at least adds this visual representation of the action and the visual representation of space and of um movement so your words can be amplified by uh, or complemented by a dialogue in in gestures for instance or in song or uh, so it's it's already a lot more concrete than just using the voice so yeah i'm rambling a bit but i, I saw of this because of the uh, clubhouse which is of course purely audio and mm. All these people talking, 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 theory, and where is the action? Where is the mm. essence of the thing that seems to get further and further away? 
there. That was my point. <laughs> At the very end. Yeah, this is of course also the paradox of this project, of this podcast. Um, which I find sometimes, if you can't... Because it was born out of the simple uh, realization that if you cannot meet or if you cannot at the moment yeah. have, have the real thing, that you, then you can at least meet to talk about. So uh, I'm, I think we are quite, um, or it is uh, inherent to this proposal that we know that we are just talking about something. And But at the same time, we try to find ways to, maybe the talking is... You can you can start to talk about uh, let's say theater performance if you are open to a kind of a word play or play with words or that you are uh, know that you're a little that you're not too fixed on on a certain um, mm. language or in a certain way to speak but you 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 try to you know that it's an effort to <laughs> to find words. To describe what mm -hmm. you're doing or what you have seen and and this in itself or this effort or th this is yeah this can be uh, fun or interesting it can of course lead to uh, misunderstanding um, sometimes misunderstanding is interesting and sometimes it's just stupid and <laughs> um, mm. but of course it's it's one uh, one 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 answer to this uh, problem could be to this is the, the what is good to do if you have a conference maybe that you have a, 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 a or if you have a group of people yeah if you have a conference or some gathering where you where you focus on talking then you can also see or experience something together and if you have the experience, yes. for instance, see the performance together, and then you have something to talk about. You have a common, exactly. you have a common exactly. experience. To have, you have some yeah. common experience. Or a training, or mm. a research. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And, and this would be, absolutely my dream conference would be to bring uh, very different scholars and practitioners together, put them in a room, a studio, and do a small or large research together like a cross-pollination research in which you know a collective uh, uh, a research path is done but everyone has their own um, personal artistic or research question that they are working with and on and the resulting conference will be only on what happens in that space that we all witnessed that we all were part of so you don't have this uh, yeah, I want to respond to, uh, uh, and I want to tell you about this thing I did five years ago. <laughs> and then comes a big story trying to explain what you did five years ago. And all is hopeless, really. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult <clears throat> to bring an action into the room that is not, that was not present. Yeah, it's different with references. This, this you can bring, you know, uh, other sources or because they can kind of act from themselves for themselves yeah but this was actually what you posed in the first uh, problem this was what what was sometimes or which is difficult for me in conferences especially for instance you mentioned mm. the parliament of practices where uh, you meet, uh, we meet sometimes on, on Zoom uh, with a bunch of people mm. from around the world, uh, theater people or performing people. Um, and uh, I feel that sometimes the languages are very different and actually uh, it's, uh, it, it, it stays a lot, it stays sometimes very abstract, you know, and, uh, some, yeah, and everybody true. agrees to each other somehow, but... <laughs> They don't, I don't really know it's what true. you're talking about or what she's talking about or what you're talking about. And um, There's something nice in that, though, that, you know, when you allow somehow, because this is the thing, uh, Simon, that, you know, when you try to make a debate with an argument and, and you're making theory, some, mm. a, a theory, you're making something uh, that is not an action, it invites 
a counter argument and then an argument and then an argument and they all try to kind of really like be sharp into each other and and that's fine but there's another way of uh, of exchanging of dialogue which is more like a responding to each other which leaves a lot of open space in between so some response can be like it might be very hard even to to uh, see how can this be a response to what was you know i just don't get it but okay that doesn't matter because someone clearly uh, had that response and and found it you know worth enough to put it in the space um but it doesn't create a chain of argument rather what it creates is a is a something that you know i can only come up with words like oracle or uh, maybe poetry or that will that that will attract different uh, bits of information on its own velocity and uh, and nobody really knows what it all means it's a completely different way of uh, letting knowledge emerge or insights that that actually have nothing to do with logic at that moment i mean personally yes but not in trying to make a logic that everyone in the end can uh agree on yeah it, it so it, i i i think you're right that it, what happens in the parliament is often a bit more floating and uh, if you want to read something about this way of dialogue uh, you could read by a book by uh, David Bohm uh, let me let me check the exact title um, he was yeah it's called on dialogue the book mm -hmm. and uh, and he was a physicist that uh, became very, very interested in, uh, in, in dialogue, in this forum that does not build arguments, but allows um, interest and, uh, and resonance to actually pull information into, into the circle. Yeah, he is also very much uh, busy with uh, quantum physics, uh, which you, you will... <laughs> This will not be surprising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, understand it. Uh, or yes, yes, of course, yes. Yes, but yes, and uh, sometimes it's also uh, confusion, no? Sometimes it's... Absolutely. And confusion is, is absolutely... It's a necessary part, I, I think, actually, confusion in, in this kind of process. It, it is even... It's even a healthy part in a way, but the, the trick is not to get um, either bored or, or, but with the confusion, but to, to always try to, f to find what is interesting to me in here. And if it's nothing, then you're just patient for a while and you just listen to the others who are maybe engaged with something that is not interesting for you at that moment. And then suddenly, when you are patient, you will find, ah, now this is interesting. And maybe it's interesting from a direction that you could never have predicted uh, at the start, you know, because it comes very randomly for you into that circle. And you think, oh, okay, that image or that word actually sparks something in my knowledge. And this, this uh, yeah, I find it endlessly fascinating, as you can hear. And it has, for me, a lot to do, actually, with uh, performance creation. Yeah, yeah, because there is a rigor there also in this, uh, um, the same as in the studio, where you have to be exceptionally true to your actual interest. There's no other thing or no other sense that will tell you if this is worth bringing or not. To the studio it have to be somehow interesting to you or engaging or and if not if you can find it then you have to be patient 
<laughs> and hang around and work and do and and then you find it again there's there's this uh, oracular um rigor i would say hmm 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 i sometimes when i talk to you you start to connect everything <laughs> from this to, to that and then you end in some completely different area and <laughs> I kind of don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's on, true. On we were speaking di about oh, di dialogue. Yes. Yeah. Di And action. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I. Um, What you say is true, of course, but you can always look at everything from the positive <laughs> side, let's say. No, you can say, ah, this is a yes. confusion, but it's all, it's also good and interesting. And you, if you're patient, and sometimes it's just confusion. <laughs> and sometimes it's Absolutely. just misunderstanding. And it's just, uh, well, and so. But Simon, confusion is confusion. <laughs> it's not a good confusion or a bad confusion. It's confusion. It's, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm not romanticizing a particular kind of confusion. Mm -hmm. No, I think you know, you have to call the things <laughs> somehow if you can for what they are. Like like uh I also hate this thing of I was talking with Gonzalo about this too of the uh, you know that mistakes or the failures are what it's all about. They are the most interesting. And it's like, yeah. Yes, I know what you mean, but They are not really failures. They are tryings or they are uh, um, actions that, that go different than you thought. But to call them failures and to romanticize that concept of a failure, it it sits very uh, strange with me in the yes, same way as saying. Yeah, yeah, this. of course. It's the, in the same way because yeah. a failure is a, is a failure. and It's a failure. Yeah. <laughs> And um, yeah. to have to have the possibility, then you can try to make failures work for you. But uh, then you have to have a kind of a good structure before. Also, you cannot want a failure like that. No, you, <laughs> if no, <you> exactly, <laughs> exactly, so, exactly. So, <laughs> and then it's not really a failure. It's yeah. just you know something that happens that's unexpected. Yeah, and and that yeah, you yeah. did not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so maybe uh, the, 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 the only thing that when I got in touch with this David Bohm dialogue thing, it was only once that one guy uh, um, uh, in the university hmm. made, a, uh, made a workshop with us on dialogue and they, he introduced us to a kind of a, with, to a certain uh, technique. So we, we were given a kind of a structure in which we could have a dialogue. The structure consisted of sitting together in a circle and to have uh, like mm -hmm. a small bell and we had some principles in the in the center so one of the principles for instance was it which was lying you could always read one of the principles was suspend your um suspend your um how do you say uh, widerstand suspend your resistance To work, uh, because yeah. you always if you if somebody else talks you always feel inner resistance which makes you mm -hmm. but 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 you want to answer what is your mm -hmm. opinion yeah <clears throat> but you can also suspend this resistance not not it it will be or it is there you cannot put it off you should not put it off but you can look at it suspend it and try to listen what the other person really has to say uh, mm -hmm. instead of answering to your own completion of what the other <laughs> uh, or your own interpretation <laughs> so this was one principle and then were other principles like i don't know speak slowly or something or speak i don't know or speak from your i will now translate it, what i understood or what i remember like speak mm -hmm. from your mm -hmm. position like sp speak from from a concrete mm -hmm. position yeah from yourself uh, and not um about abstract yeah you know <laughs> Yeah. So this and Group, and uh, uh, and this was a yeah. kind of a, yeah a kind of a, um, had a, had a beginning and an end and you 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 know that you 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 start and you know ah uh, we are all getting now into this dialogue process and we're in a different kind mm -hmm. of situation. 
um, of course it's a kind it's heavy somehow you cannot like do this every day or I, I don't want to sit in the evening after dinner <laughs> or in the in the podcast now with you and we have the bell and then we will say uh, it gives a certain <laughs> it gives a certain uh, yeah. solemnity to everything yeah yeah and graveness yeah for sure yeah. Um, of yeah, but it's uh, it's good. But maybe yeah, which is a link to performance also. You no, know, this this graveness, this bell, the circle, they are forms to kind of elevate and mark the situation, and and al also the principles uh, uh, very much um, just help you to realize I'm not now uh, in everyday life i am somewhere mm -hmm. else i'm in this space of dialogue which is very particular and uh, yeah 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 and this uh, is not e easily created because it can also fall no. very very fast it can fall into uh, confusion or banality or uh, it can become yeah how do you say um embarrassing 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's true yeah i think as with many 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 things you know this graveness this uh, kind of uh or let's not graveness but this kind of integrity and intensity of the moment of this this marked moment in the circle with the bell that i would offer that uh, this does not mean that everything has to be slow and serious to me, there's no reason why it should not be hilarious or ironic or uh, uh, or random or or a lot of fantasy or romantic or you know all this all this and this is what I call them responses. They are very welcome in in uh, I think that that is. Many times when these forms come up, people have this kind of church-like attitude, like, okay, so we cannot laugh and we have to, mm -hmm. you know, speak a bit lower than usual and maybe with more gravitas and uh, earnest, you know, speak about heavy things. But there's, I don't think there's anywhere where it necessitates this. It actually cuts off, you know, cuts off a lot of the possible things that could happen when you censor yourself in that uh, in that way like, like I only like slow music with low instruments yeah it's possible but yeah okay then I uh, I just I will I, I have brought now something else maybe we will yes one idea also I would like to some in some moment to revisit the classic texts with you somehow Ooh. so um and i uh, so let's say uh, we could speak uh, how about, classic how Which classic like classic? like brecht classic but brecht classic no? okay. epic theater or something um uh, this is one just one idea maybe some I, I would like to 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 revisit some of those uh those texts mm. uh, and um yeah and read them quote them and speak about them and I came uh, upon a sentence which I have invented, and I have, um, and uh, it was from from a, from a film critic speaking about films. And uh, in the end of of this, he said, uh, "Only artificiality will save the cinema." <laughs> Because in, in this in this critic it was it he also uh, talked about um, authenticity or realism naturalism and uh, blah blah, mm -hmm. blah 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 we will not go into that but you could also say and I find it interesting to say only artificiality will save theater <laughs> also in the when we go into online performing or something because I see always a lot of um, danger somehow to to uh, this fashion of authenticity and of course now we are in mm -hmm. our houses we are inside we are we are now we are on zoom we have the background of our own house and uh, so this I, I i will elaborate maybe in some other way about that but 
I find it interesting, interesting point to put artificiality. It is. Um, yeah, I love it. I love artificiality. That's a, <laughs> it's a great topic, actually, Simon. It makes me. It reminds me of that the podcast that hooked me the very first. Uh, the first one that hooked me was the moth. True stories as told before a live audience with no notes. Do you you mm -hmm. know this uh, podcast? No. Right? Yeah. It, I I no. Oh my god! It's so lovely. Mm -hmm. It's um. It's people, and sometimes they are a professional. Uh, as, uh, performers or teachers or people who are used to speaking but many times they're also just people with a story they won't share and uh, and they are coached a little they're directed a little but then they tell it live and they're not allowed to have like papers in their hand or notes or cards so mm -hmm. it is really told as a story and it's so fascinating it's so beautiful and i have been thinking a lot since i've um started listening to it um, because these stories, if you speak now about authenticness and, uh, uh, you know, being very uh, uh, real in this non-artificial non way, <laughs> that is absolutely what it is. Even though it's a little crafted, they've been helped. The, the kind of realness is is so strong and um and what is what was fascinating is uh is that i absolutely agree with you that artificiality shall save the theater and yet i am so hooked to these true life stories um that i i i was questioning how do they relate mm -hmm. what is uh, appealing to me in this authentic raw <laughs> storytelling and then this artificial theater that is almost its opposite no? mm. my answer would be that that these raw stories are extremely interesting as we meet one unique other person but that story can only be told one time that uh, by that particular person because it's theirs and they can also not make up another one because that is their story and they might have uh, another story from their life but they can't just pull it out of their hat so it could never um, be this creating uh, metaphors and creating signs and signals because it is just what is there and the, the limitations are that are exactly the same it's just what is there so you, there's a limit in a way you cannot make a living out of uh, out of that for instance it cannot become a profession or something bigger than than your own life maybe what do you think this is the example of this podcast yeah 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 versus the theater that needs artificiality mm -hmm. to actually create distance i would say yeah, um, I don't at the moment. I don't know what to say about that. I would um, argue that it's also um, how to say it immediately becomes also artificial or crafted, as you say. No, it is not. Uh, it is not. Um, I don't know. We are talking about not not a really not a real example now. No, I don't know what we are uh, talking about. At the no, moment. that is true. You should but maybe you can listen to it. Yeah, I sure you you will enjoy. Yeah, very addictive. Very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's you move had on. Another one. We are going to um, plan. A last online adventure adventure before hopefully the tests and the vaccines will take us out of this terrible crisis and we are getting ahead 
to a new, better normal life. <laughs> and a new, better <laughs> theater <laughs> life. Shiny, um, shiny new life. <laughs> yeah, but before that, which uh, in Europe at least accidentally falls also on Easter, so the starting of spring and also the Easter week where traditionally we... Um, um, we celebrate the resurrection. <laughs> so I, we will use this Who again <laughs> <laughs> of one of the of one, one of the biggest influencers <laughs> before Instagram. <laughs> uh, we will um, have a last online adventure somehow. Um, code name mm -hmm. is the village. And uh, we, will, we will invite practitioners of theater and of performing arts, but also scholars to take part in some form of a week of a, yeah, of a, vi of a village um, where, we, um, uh, where we dwell, where we are, where we think uh, and practice uh, um, a collaborative exploration or experiment in dramaturgy dealing with with a text and a topic which um, hopefully will inspire us and will inspire or um, make emerge also a result which we can show in the end of this week um, for resurrection <laughs> but we still have to work on it um, and we will put out the information soon i i think you are so optimistic simon we will make one last internet internet <laughs> festival before i really hope you're right i so hope that you are right on that i am a little bit more pessimistic i have to say yeah, uh, me too, but... It's but okay. it brings <laughs> us... <yeah. laughs> it also brings us to, you know, the topic that actually I wanted to bring tonight. And um, and maybe we can just explore it a little because uh, uh, it's a big topic. It will come back a couple of times uh, mm -hmm. over the coming uh, sessions, I guess. And uh, and this, it, it's a big question. It's a conundrum. It's a, it's a problem. Or a challenge, yeah, you should maybe, uh, that's how a lot of people say you should not say problem, you should say challenge, because it invites solutions. So let's invite solutions. It's a challenge. Be and careful, a challenge of, I will just interject, uh, be careful with solutionism. There's also the, the ah, vice of solutionism. There is so not, true. not, there is no, not, uh, not every problem oh, has a solution. So right. <laughs> and I so agree with you, actually. You can use, I give you the word solutionism <laughs> now. You can say, you're just a solutionist. <laughs> the people, there is and some... Dirty yeah. in front of it. For instance, this is the term that you apply to the Silicon Valley guys who say, oh, we just need the right app and then we can solve uh -huh. the problem. No, this is solutionism. Oh my God, Simon, you are so right. <laughs> yeah. uh. So, <laughs> let me just put the question then. <laughs> so, the question is, how can we, how can independent theater makers, performers, musicians um, get to work in the coming period, which would start maybe end of spring, beginning of summer, but who knows how long it will stretch out. Maybe it will change the way that we work forever. what the crisis that we have gone through. Mm -hmm. So how can independent artists who, and small groups, I guess, small theater groups that are not, uh, you know, in the, in the bigger uh, cycles of being, having a season ready that then can tour and be programmed and uh, of, of which there are so many waiting in the wings right now that the theaters, you know, I know they are already packed for the coming season, like more full than they they actually can be. Mm -hmm. So what about the rest of us? What about this? Uh... Yeah, uh, 
Do you, uh, it's yeah. a big question. It's a big question, of it's course. It's a big question. Is, uh, yeah. First thing yeah. that you can say, okay, we have the online world, no? But the online world is also very populated by a lot of people who who deal with it a lot better than, than you do. <laughs> YouTube. Are you talking to me now? No, no, you, you generic you. <laughs> you. Ah, <okay>. General you. <laughs> Than me, than yes. me. Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, you. the YouTube, the YouTube uh, uh, <laughs> people on YouTube, uh, young people, other people, uh, yes. they, 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 they just manage to to make a some kind of a performance or product or idea and turn it into something successful and mm -hmm. I mean successful mm -hmm. in. So, okay, let's just say successful in the in the sense that, that there's a lot of views and that they can also live from it. No, so because it's not only the question to to make a what can to, we do? Yeah, exactly. to to make a to make a beautiful or a, or a something with quality, which is a question for itself, but also to <clears throat> to make a living from that. The two different questions, and in the Uh, online, it's very difficult to to make a living mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. how? Yeah. So uh, there's, uh, but there is a lot of different, uh, yeah, already examples. So if you want to make uh, money in the internet, you can go and start a project like a YouTube channel or a podcast or something, and it gets so successful. There gets so much people that you can either sell it to, <laughs> to uh, monetize it to YouTube. This, or, this is, <laughs> or <laughs> this is your suggestion. No, no, but it's it's what is out there, no. So, but it's also uh -huh. I think I think we're not. You cannot also want that. It's it also just happens, you know. On YouTube, for instance, there is a guy who's uh, playing piano and looking always very strangely in the camera. I think a Russian guy plays very good piano and always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. plays popular tunes and has very strange topics of the videos and he always plays looking into the camera and this is kind of a, his own style and it's it's just out there and a lot of people watch it but this is this is one mm -hmm. thing so i think this the all the online world it's is very yeah. limited f well, for us uh, in this sense it it it, um, it definitely is i mean it, mm. but i said i would say you know to to approach this this question which is like a jungle it's a jungle question <laughs> it's not yeah. it's not what is this flower it's like what is this jungle it's it's to dive a little bit more in the question like what are we actually asking uh what are what are things floating around in there and yeah um, if what i see mm -hmm. is uh is that there's a you know as as we have been kind of brutally kicked out of our uh, our normal rhythm, right? We're in some kind of rupture, some kind of a suspended pose in which, yeah, you people try create something new and then the rules change again and it can't happen. Or uh, you try something online and yeah, okay. And then what? And so we are in this strange kind of empty moment and I can't really see where it's going to start up again using what I know. But if I start to think, where is space right now? Where, what are the, you know, what are the, maybe can be paraphrased, like what could we offer and where could we offer it? Just thinking oh, in that way. Then suddenly some kind of images start to appear like, ah, oh, this could be possible or that could be possible. But they are all very different than what I know. Hmm. That's that's one part that that is. You mean to now me more seems less, worth exploring. Yeah, explore other spaces which you didn't use before. Like example, for do you have instance, an example for instance? Yeah. For instance, um, um, I could see this uh, street figure that I have uh, using the streets in a way that is new to me, that is not in the context of a festival that is organized by a big organizer that is kind of a gathering hundreds of people in one place, but it's more that that maybe the character is, is creating a route through the normal lives of people. So 
is like a traveling mini festival that's floating around this one character that has quite intimate. Uh, if I think of that, I think, yeah, that, that could be nice. It's like you bring a little adventure and then it has so much implications on how this could be organized in a way that would be sustainable and flexible and that could, that could, you know, maybe grow to 10 performers or then when it's smaller place, it could be just three or so that's the kind of fantasies that it invites in me in when I say, what could we offer that goes very much outside the normal track of, uh, of making a performance and then selling it to festivals who do the organizing kind of on a larger scale and, uh, and gather, gather the people. Because I know that these are not going to happen in the summer. Mm -hmm. These festivals, it's, it's already done. They're not going to. In, in Holland, no festivals are getting their uh, insurance, the outdoor <laughs> festivals, because oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very practical reason. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so on the heels of that follows how can we organize? Mm -hmm. yeah, what is the ways of organizing that would be practical and, and actually result in work? Yeah. And then what will that change in the way that we create maybe and which new partnerships would or could be um could be very fruitful now always thinking it is paired with this new new uh um ways of organizing the, mm -hmm. the work organizing the performance yeah yeah, if I, I, I yeah, I, I want to add to that. I want to come back to what I said before and add, mm -hmm. elaborate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, and add mm -hmm. to that what you were saying, because in the online world, you also so there are these models that you make become you know, famous and then you monetize somehow and sell your things to YouTube or whatever. But I. There is also there is also a lot of things which work via uh, mm -hmm. via supporters. So there is a you have a thing you started a thing for instance a newsletter or a podcast or a show <clears throat> something yeah which comes back regularly and um, people start to like it no yeah. and people start if you incentivize them a little bit. It's okay if you have you, if you have uh, this idea and if you have this what you're doing, and you have a kind of a regularity and you build up <clears throat> your your strong spectators, your strong small audience, and then I think it it happens and it happened that these small or middle audience spectators, listeners, whatever, they are also mm -hmm. um, they are also willing and ready to support you with a with what they can no so what mm -hmm. i <clears throat> mm -hmm. this is a and then there is a lot of independent um, um things in the internet going on which is uh, uh, which is um um sustained by supporters who give every month or every year or whatever a small donation or a small contribution of money yeah and sometimes there is a kind of a system of re reward that that they get uh, an extra thank you or whatever no but uh, and this applied mm. to applied to our arts our theater arts at least in my <clears throat> in my situation in in our little town in schwerte or maybe in other mm -hmm. situations is is maybe Maybe we should, oh, no, different. I think we should aim at, at uh, or I think there should be some kind of, of one, one leg of, of the sustaining of the how, how to go on working should be yeah. a kind of a, um, um, a sustainable or sustaining uh, support by 
who no it could be also the state who gives you says here i give you <laughs> this this stipend to to work hmm. or you have you have for any reason everybody who has worked in, worked in the arts has has his or her audience no and maybe <clears throat> maybe they could also be when they come and visit the show or when they came or when they are connected with you you have a newsletter and you send it to them and uh, but maybe they could also be interested in uh, in supporting um in supporting you directly with uh, and you can or we can find this, uh, a, a way how to how to do that to make an association or to make another kind of uh, um mm. so and this means that you're going to work more, uh, also to be more stable locally no that you that you work and you are you have to be or you are present um locally this happens for instance to us that we are um, present locally with our cultural bar and with our theater. And there's a lot of people who come there. And du during last summer, a lot of people came there and experienced a good time <laughs> with us. And now my question is, could these people instead of, or additionally to come always and consume, um, could they also maybe be willing to pay one euro each month or two euros or ten mm -hmm. to sustain the work to, to give it a continuity yeah, yeah. and like a circle of friends like this a is, yeah, this yeah, is like, actually yeah this is quite old, a classic uh, yeah. way you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like a circle yeah. of friends yeah. like a uh, and um so this is one um thing which i uh, at least yeah. for for us Super interesting. um Yeah, because uh, it's all about. I think in this, if we have this this crisis situation, it's all about making smaller, um, smaller, uh, innovative, experimental things yeah. in different locations. Yeah. But they will not pay off by entrance, or nobody will. No, there is no, no. Uh, programmer who will buy you for that because. No, so you have to kind of have your own structure, and so you have to be. We have to be paid yeah, yeah. in advance. We have to be paid for working, Very not true. for the for the <laughs> performance. So. As I hear it, uh, Simon, I I really love the idea, and I think it's so important because it there's two aspects that I find very interesting, and one is that, uh, of course, this is a well known uh, tactic. Uh, for institutions like the opera house is very dependent on their members or what they call friends, their mm -hmm. circle of friends, and they give uh, sometimes a considerable amount of money. And actually, the little musicians collective that I am part of, Splendor, here in Amsterdam, that mm -hmm. has its own building with two beautiful halls where we can do concerts and rehearse, and uh, and the concerts are super cheap for everyone. It all exists because we have more than a thousand, over a thousand friends that all pay a hundred euros a month, and in, and you know that helps us to keep That's the building lot. and, and do, <laughs> do things. Yeah. Uh, hun no, hundred a year. Sorry, <laughs> hundred a year. It's also, a year. <laughs> it's also a lot. It's very nice. It's very good. So. No, it's not a lot because they can go for free. Yeah, yeah. To all the yeah. concerts. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a lot. Just believe me. It's, yeah, yeah, I know. But, if but, you have yeah. a salary, that's not a lot. Yeah. Anyways, the th my point is that so this is an accepted and known uh, thing. Yes. But it's always circling around an institution mm -hmm. or an organization, and usually even in the culture that it has a building. A place mm -hmm. yes. that you know what you are supporting. You can see it. You can go there. Mm -hmm. And I think what what I find very interesting is this notion that no, it can also be for a person. And what that then means or is you are actually supporting or collective. Mm -hmm. You're supporting a practice mm -hmm. rather than a building. And you're paying a practice to be rather than buying its result, the performance or 
the book or the painting that is good. And I believe it is an extremely great uh, switch yeah. for all artists, actually. for It would bring something, a spotlight on this element of, no, uh, uh, an artist has a consistency in their, in their practice that is worth supporting. That's actually one of the interesting things that is there. And then it bears these fruits that are, you know, can be shared. And then the other part of what I found really interesting aspect is, uh, huh, did I, did I, yeah. I forgot what I was going to say, how embarrassing. <laughs> We're alive. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> time, time to end this podcast right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Was it on more on the economic I will, I will level, remember, but... or, or was it because it's of course also the the it could, we could also talk about the artistic level, um, mm -hmm. which we we say how 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 to go on um, working, but um, and the other thing is what of course it's very important I think to. Yeah, to 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 go on networking. Huh? Also, if some meetings are a waste of time, but not yes. not all the meetings, or maybe in. Uh, but it, it was always like that. In the, the meetings were always a waste of time, and then during the coffee break, you had this <laughs> this nice conversation, <laughs> and you had the next yeah. project. Yeah. And um, yeah. so these networking things. Yeah, and uh, one for instance, we had a networking meeting with uh, artists from our region, and then I was talking about our place, about our bar, about our theater, and there was somebody who's who was very interested, and now we are going to to include her in our programming of this year. Maybe this, there will be some kind of exchange. So. Mm, uh, that's because great. in this in this yeah, meeting yeah, there were, so in this meeting there was the question where to perform and then some people say ah oh, it's always it's so terrible situation because nobody is buying performances and of course it's true but then mm -hmm. I was also saying well we have a room and we have you can <laughs> basically come and perform here yeah <laughs> yeah and we can yeah. see what we can do together and this is um, yeah and some people were interested in that so. To connect and to use the infrastructure and to to somehow connect more or be more open to mm -hmm. to to collaborations. Absolutely. It's crucial. No? It's really crucial. Yeah. yeah. And there, there's one other aspect. And, and again, uh, this is probably not the only time that we will refer to it or speak about it. And this is that there is this um, aspect of... or. It, Again, two things. I, hurry, I really hope I don't forget the second one now. So the first, <laughs> the first thing is to kind of note that we are also, as as cultural sector and as performers, operating within a very specific frame of of mind in a very specific value system that has a very specific way of treating our work, our product, our practice. And um, and it's it's very uh, colored and influenced, of course, is part of the market system. And the resulting um, problems are very much similar to the market system. There is a lot of waste. There is very little sustainability. There is uh, fragmentation. There is uh, competition to the point that you know is accepted that many fail and and now i really mean fail not the nice fail that you know <laughs> leads to good things but fail miserably and have to quit and then you know all the time and effort and and money let's be honest put into this uh uh, uh career or this um education it's just poof, gone. Mm. That's one part, the sustainability. And there's really an economic and, uh, and a kind of value 
side to that. I think we sh- we really can dive more into it. And then connected to that is this new idea of the donut economy, which is not so much a new idea as a very clever way of organizing all these um, or a lot of the critiques on uh, on free market and and especially on the growth using growth as as most important measure for successful economy right always have to have to grow and this this donut economy suggests no there is actually a bandwidth that is a that looks like a donut that's why it's called that way and it represents this quite narrow ring of where an economy sustains the people but does not overwhelm the natural resources and um and i think it's really interesting to see what does this way of thinking mean for our cultural sector and what what changes does it uh, would it point to if you take it seriously and things like wasting wasting work wasting people mm. wasting uh effort money mm-hmm all come come in that kind of uh, ecological thinking or sustainable thinking have you seen it this uh, donut economy thing no 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 my association no, oh, i send it to you yeah ah, i didn't, I, didn't. I send it to you it's really interesting and it's uh, kind of changing uh, the way that that we can kind of grasp what this alternative what these critiques on growth economy mean or where they could lead it's really a very clever um putting it together so it's understandable uh what my association is now to this donut economy is of course uh, i think of mm-hmm. the simpsons but <laughs> or of twin peaks also <laughs> donuts and damn good coffee this was oh yeah it was no no not donuts no it was donuts. Oh no, my in friend twin peaks, in twin peaks it was cherry donuts. pie Cherry pie also. Cherry also pie. Had to- also- ah, but also donuts. Yeah, you're also right. Donuts. The, the cops would eat donuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Andy. By the way, <laughs> by the way, I have to. I have, sometimes I have to see it again. I find it in, in in this series. I really find it fantastic how 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 Lynch deals with his popular things and with yeah with coffee and with donuts and with that. <laughs> and I uh, I like. I like how every 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 character in the Twin Peaks series, at least in the in the first and the second, um, <clears throat> because the third yeah. season, which came yeah, of course different. later, and it's, it's uh, different. Uh, totally different. But in the first and the second, every character in some moment undergoes a fundamental transformation. I don't know if you remember yeah. that, and they transform oh, yeah. completely. And it's somehow you you, uh, f- and then it, then it's so so great. The one who was who wear, wore a black uh, suit afterwards is to completely white, uh, wearing only white. And mm-hmm. one of the mm-hmm. boss of the hotel, he before he smoked cigars, and after this fundamental transformation, he only eats celery. <laughs> I don't know if you remember. <laughs> so this play with with objects and with um, characters, yeah. I like very much. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's very it's so clever, and and it. It, uh, I think it, what you just mentioned is one of the reasons why so many things became very iconic yeah. in that series. It really invites that archetypical, iconic uh, creation of that. Yeah. yeah, super, super strong. But what my association for this uh, this donut economy was that, yeah, why always create new things? We have performances. We, this was also in the in the talk with Harald Redma, which mm-hmm, we had. Exactly. We need time to perform what we created. No, <laughs> we want yeah. to perform what we created. So true. Two years ago, so we true. created That's... the performance, and we want to perform that. This is uh, and now yeah. it's old again. And yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But it's and it's horrible. And yeah. this is the 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 most terrible waste of all. Yeah. I find it because yeah, it's so yeah. painful. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but it's it's also yeah it's um, 
yeah it's the way so this but um, yeah we have to build and this is why why I was saying that with the, the, the supporter structure so yeah circle of friends yeah. structure because it's somehow it's your yeah. your own fundament at least your own and this yeah. i think yeah yeah it's fundamental to find some <laughs> fundaments at least and i think that they there are possibilities <laughs> locally it's fundamental i think that locally so in small yeah. Part Absolutely. of the cities in the or in small cities or in small regions and within the small circle there are um, possibilities uh, to Absolutely. make your stand and then also get some sustaining uh, money. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah, yeah. All right, money. Well, with David Lynch and <laughs> money. We can <laughs> we can say goodbye for now. Yeah, we will say goodbye next time. I hope with with the guest uh, we will see about that and yeah. uh, with more news and um, yeah. and information on the village. Yes, that's true. Okay, and uh, you can recommend this podcast to other people. We would like to have more listeners, and you can comment. You can send us comments. Uh, very welcome if you and um, yeah and you can come also on the show if you want to say something why not just write and you will see if you can come uh, just call us because you you know who we are <laughs> yeah probably <exactly. laughs> okay All right. great I will throw us out with uh, music yes yeah. goodbye see you next time <laughs>